今日午後8時ごろ、渋谷区の渋谷川で女性の変死体が発見されました。Well, how's it going, everyone? My name is Michael S. K., and welcome back to Chaos Head Noah. Looks like we have our,、uh, what is it, the sixth of the new generation madness incidents.、Uh, the sixth one has now appeared, and、uh, I think it's related to the,、uh, the chopped off hand that we got. So it definitely was not a n a n a m i s It was、uh, whoever this person is, whoever this person that is no longer alive. So that's good? Question mark? I mean, it sucks that somebody died, but I guess it's good that、uh, Nanami is okay. I guess that's the good takeaway here. But in the last episode, we kind of got our bearings a little bit. We saw what happened at the,、uh, the top of that tower, and that we were, in a way, pretty much baited. Like we were kind of just brought up out there to make ourselves look like fools, which is. Par for the course when it comes to this wacky and wild story, but other than that, we just woke up in a hospital room and dipped on out. So here we are. He got a shower, Edogawa Kunisum, Tokachi Ayami san, Niju Nana Saide, Jean wa, Nodo, Tsumara Seta Koto Nioru, Chisokushi to Mirare Teimas. Hm. Kesat no Shirabe Niorimasto, He got a shower, Migite no Nikuga, Kesri Torarete, Honega Rosh to Stori. Mata, Ino Naka Karawa, 人間の肉とみられる内容物が見つかりました。What? 被害者は自らの右手を噛みちぎって食べたとみられ、また足首が紐で縛られていたとのことです。警察では自殺、他殺の両面から捜査を進めています。Interesting. Okay, never mind what I just said. Okay, so group dive. Uh, these are all the other names. You know what? I'm too lazy anymore. We'll just go with the stupid ass names that the,、uh, that the Committee of Zero came up with. We'll just, we'll just roll with it. Man Child, cr、uh, Crucifixion, Vampire, Numbskull, and Finger Food. Well, that one, I guess, kind of works. Ever since the Seismic Intensity 5 earthquake, the city of Shibuya has been overwrought with an air of pure bloodlust. The sense of order in the city has been. Visibly deteriorating. This decrease in security was not just regarding fights among young people, but the increasing number of store windows being broken, as well as a large surge in theft. The media continued to use the term new generation in order to establish a feeling of crisis and entrapment, and in response to such fear mongering, a handful of stores had abruptly ceased operations. In addition, a group calling themselves the Anti New Gen. Had suddenly transformed into a riotous mob during one of their weekly demonstrations. The fuck was that? Oh, you know what? I think I had a cable that fell. Okay. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what the hell made that noise? There was, there was like some random noise. It, it sounded like it was behind me, but nope, it was to my left. We good. We good.、Uh, so they charged into the Shibuya police station.、Uh, it resulted in the arrest of over 100 people. Jesus. Much like the Esper Boy riot, lovely. That, that's us.、Uh, thousands upon thousands of curious onlookers gathered in the area in order to enjoy yet another shitstorm. There was a striking difference in excitement between those who were visiting the city and those who lived in it. The former expected Shibuya to be more brutally eventful than ever, while the latter condemned the lawlessness of their home and insisted on strengthening police authority. Then, as if to mock all the uproar, the sixth new gen incident occurred, and of course, the perpetrator had yet to be apprehended. As God intended. Right? Something along those lines, maybe? It had been a week since the earthquake, and in that period of time, I had been suspended from school. Even if I hadn't been suspended, I wouldn't have been in the proper mental state to go to school anyway. The day immediately following the earthquake, another new gen incident had occurred. That incident, just like the murder of Dr. Takashina, was obviously supposed to send a message to me. It was a woman who'd bitten off her own right hand. There was no doubt in my mind that it was supposed to elude Nanami's severed right hand. Nanami was clear bait from Shogun to lure me, or to lure me out, and even though I knew that, the thought that Nanami could have been the one killed. Sent shivers down my spine. 
And since I had become famous in Shibuya in the worst sense of the word, I was now more terrified of going out than ever. If I had a hole to crawl into, I would have done it with no hesitation. Even going to the convenience store to buy food for myself killed me, and there had been entire days I went without eating. It was impossible for me to walk outside with my head not glued to the ground. I, er, it always felt like someone was laughing at me. The gazes of other people terrified me. I didn't want to talk to anyone, to see anyone. People from the mass media had been trying to bother me constantly, but I ignored every single one of them. I hadn't called my parents, nor had I talked to Nanami. I hadn't been playing ESO either. Oh shit. Oh yeah, we got real problems now. If it somehow got out that I was Nightheart, I would be absolutely fucked. It had been one week now. Was that enough time for everything to cool down? People always say, oh, they'll forget about it in a month. But hopefully it did actually, or it didn't take, it didn't actually take that long. Sorry, I can't read. And I mean, trends did go by extremely quickly these days. The slang people used would become obsolete by the next year. That's why my commentary never really works sometimes. Even net slang and memes that people used online died out in just a couple of months. Television sought out heroes, idols, villains, or whatever else that could excite the public, and as soon as it found them, it consumed them for all they're worth and then promptly discarded them. Even the new gen cases, which had been going on for six cases now, were quieting down. No one even talked about the first case on that channel anymore. Everything faded from people's memories in the blink of an eye. Which was why I was hoping that in the past week, everything that had happened to me had already faded from the public consciousness, just like some passing trend. Even if it was just wishful thinking, I couldn't help but hope that it might be true. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get like the occasional like glance or whatever, or somebody will call us out. But it wouldn't. It would not have been as bad if it were like one day after. Now that it's a week after. I'm sure it did quiet down. My head and stomach started to pang. I sat down on my usual bench and calmed myself down. Seraton would know what to say right now. So nani kurushimu gurai nara, mo gakkou ni nanka iku no yamereba ii shisho? I was at the point where I was starting to consider it. I mean, due to the worsening security, more and more people had been opting out of school in Shibuya Ward, so it wouldn't just be me. And I'd always thought that it made no difference whether or not I graduated, so much so that I'd be willing to drop out of school right now. But despite that, I still planned to continue going, even if it meant risking running into Yua. I gulped down a cola I'd bought at a vending machine on the way to the park, and then stood up from the bench where drinking soda in the morning... I should just stop kidding myself. I didn't want to go to school, but I didn't want to quit it either. Because if I quit school, I wouldn't be able to see Remy anymore. We were classmates, so as long as I kept going to school, I'd be able to see her without going out of my way to do so. But if I lost that, I could always just call her and go meet her directly. But like I said, that would mean I'd have to go out of my way to contact her. And I knew for a fact that I couldn't do that. In fact, I already hadn't been able to bring myself to see her for a while now. That was what Remy had promised me. And I hadn't heard from her for over 10 days now, not a single word. The thought that Remy, my one and only ally, might have fallen out of love with me after seeing my disgusting behavior on TV, well, it destroyed me. I was terrified. I felt like crying, and I had never felt so alone. No one, not even Nanami, had come to see me. I was being subjected to threat after threat of endless slander on the internet. I was scared shitless by the idea of Shogun and Yua. And while I'd said before that I didn't want to see anyone, the loneliness was eating away at me. I wanted Rimi to come and see me. I wanted to hug her, or I wanted her to hug me gently and tell me it would all be okay. It must have been so hard, but I'm here now, she would say. Honestly, such simple but kind words from somebody is enough to destroy a man. It is true. It really is. In the end, Remy had spoiled me rotten. 
but she wasn't in the wrong for doing so. Remy had taught me the warmth that 3D could have. VTubers do a lot of that for me nowadays. And now that I knew what that warmth felt like, I had never stopped wishing for it ever since. I couldn't get that kind of peace from 2D or delusions anymore. I couldn't survive on just my delusions. I wanted to see her. Oh, how far we've come. I mean, I still don't truly trust her, but... You know, it is what it is. When I'd passed through the school gate, I hadn't noticed any particular change in the atmosphere. That is to say, no one had noticed me. I entered the blue building. The blue building? I entered the building and started up the stairs. I don't know where the color blue came from. A girl I didn't recognize went to pass me. But just before she did, she let out an audible ah and looked up at me with pity in her eyes. I walked into the hallway where my classroom was located. Several windows were broken, and I could feel people's gazes mercilessly burning through me as they whispered. Wait, the windows were broke? Wait, what the fuck? Wait, several windows were broken? Okay, I, I guess. At that moment, I was hit with a very bad feeling. My wishful thinking was already on the verge of shattering to pieces. But even so, I opened the door to my classroom, fueled by my own one desire to see Remy. The silence lasted for about 10 seconds. Everyone was frozen and they all stared at me. I kept my head down as I walked through the quieted classroom and took my seat. As if on cue, a dokun sitting in the last row, whose name I didn't know, spoke up. And with those two sentences, time started moving again in the classroom. どうせやらせなんでしょ大きい人形と小さいお人形を抱えてただけだもんねいやめとけって西城は病気なだけだっつなそう確かにやれ well, I guess everyone's on the same page. More so than ever. This is hell. This was exactly what I'd feared the most. The Dokuns had their eyes on me now. It had been a week, but no one had forgotten about the uproar that I had caused. I was now the laughing stock of Japan. The boy who, after trying to show off his special powers to the masses, went home and slept with a figure. There was no point in protesting, saying that I had never called myself an esper. The truth was meaningless now. Right now, the truth was just the one story that everyone in Japan was familiar with. The story that tens of millions of people recognized to be the truth. There was no fixing that. No one could. Not me, not anyone on TV, not even Shogun. I was a self-proclaimed esper who no one would ever associate with. I was an absolutely revolting male otaku. The biggest freak anyone had ever seen. Honestly, yeah. But not a single person would ever look at me with anything other than, than disgust. I'd always hated TV shows that made fun of otakus, and now I'd just added fuel to the fire. I didn't have any psychic abilities. I couldn't fly, I didn't have clairvoyance, I didn't have telekinesis. I couldn't obtain a D-sword. I'd even given up on trying to save my sister just so I could save myself, like the complete piece of shit I was. I was just an otaku that had nothing to show for his life other than his knowledge of anime, video games, and what other, whatever other media. So it only made sense that I couldn't do it. I fought off my imminent mental breakdown and searched for my savior, Rimi. And when I did, my eyes met Misumi-kun's, only for him 
to immediately look away. I guess that was only fair. If you hung out with me, the entire class would shun you too. That was why he'd looked away, it was only natural. Besides, he and I had always lived in two different worlds. I was an otaku and he was a total alpha male. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good way to describe him. It was a marvel that we had ever been friends at all. I was just going to say that he was a whore, but you know, I, I, that does work. Feeling like I was on the verge of tears, I went back to scanning the room. I searched for anything I could latch onto, and I desperately cried out in my mind for Remy. But she wasn't there. Remy was nowhere to be found. Why? Was she just absent? Of all times for her to be gone, why now? I didn't have any way to get a hold of her. What if she never came to school again? If that happened, I'd never see her again for the rest of my life. That was the feeling I got. It was like that when she first appeared too. Back on the first day I saw her at school, Remy was suddenly in my class just like that. And now she disappeared just as quickly. Could she... Could she have gotten caught up in the earthquake? Could she be dead? I feel like if that were the case, we'd probably hear something. I, I don't know. I tried my best to shake off all those negative thoughts, but it was hopeless. I was just getting more and more depressed, and now my mind was being overwhelmed by an incredibly dark and foreboding delusion. I was starting to wonder if the girl known as Sakihara Rimi had ever existed at all. Maybe she was just another personality I had created inside my delusions like Saraton. When I thought of it like that, it all started to make sense. Whenever I needed help, Rimi always came to my rescue like a knight in shining armor. Whenever anyone else would treat an, uh, or treat an otaku freak like me like trash, Rimi would treat me with kindness. Had I seriously believed that there was a 3D girl that was just so damn perfect for me? Someone that was pretty much my dream girl? I... I mean, I don't know. I, I could probably roll with the fact that... Yeah, very similarly to how she popped in. Well, now she's popped out. Did a major event occur right before she popped in? Because and a, a, now a major event has occurred where she has now disappeared. I had no reason to come to school anymore. My one and only reason was gone. I really was completely alone. Just like I'd always been, I'd always been completely and utterly alone. I started to cry inside my head. It took everything I had just to keep myself from crying in real life. That was all I could do to try and at least maintain some semblance of pride, but that was, that's all it was, a semblance. I tried as hard as I could to just keep my head down, grit my teeth, and stay in my seat. Even though I didn't want to hear them, I could hear all my classmates talking. I wanted to run away, but I was too afraid that that would only make things worse. Every last one of you should just die. I had nothing left to lose, so why not just die along? Or uh, why don't you? Why just not? God damn it! So why not just die doing what I loved to the very end? Sorry, sometimes I just can't read, but it's still a bad delusion. Y'all thought I wasn't going to choose one. For example, ooh, screaming, lifting a chair in the air, and attacking a dokun with it. Let's do it. It would feel great to finally give those assholes what was coming to them. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fucking do it, man. Come on. We'll feel great. I stood up in a relaxed manner. The dokun bastards were still smirking at me like always, unaware to the divine judgment that was about to befall them. I casually lifted up my chair. Holding it above my head, I approached the Dokyun who first started making fun of me. My sudden actions caused the Dokyun to freeze, grin still on his face. Uh? Uh -huh. Nice. I swung the chair down without a moment's hesitation, hitting the guy square on the head. I felt the chair collide with his skull. The Dokyun collapsed on the spot, and a puddle of blood spread out beneath before or beneath him before I could even blink. For a moment, the classroom was completely silent. And then all hell broke loose. Every boy and girl screamed, looking at me with fear in their eyes, and then turned and ran for their lives. The Dokun who had collapsed at my feet was no longer moving, 
God damn it, shut up, guys. I swung down the chair with all my might once again. The Dokun's body spasmed, but he didn't make a sound. He had likely fainted. God damn it. Or perhaps he was already dead. I started to feel a little scared. If I stopped here, who knows when he'd get up and start attacking me instead. He was a Dokun, so he might even be carrying around a knife in his backpack. I'd already given up on life, but I didn't want to... I didn't want the end to be painful. I had to kill him. I couldn't stop until I was sure he was dead. Yep, that's how it works. I struck the Dokun's head with the chair three more times. Then again. Then again. And again. And again. Nice. You know, it's always good to have those really violent and totally fucked up uh, delusions here and there, right? While still slumped down in my seat, I lost myself in that delusion. Fuhihi. That felt pretty damn good. A gory splatter flick that had played out inside my head. Ah, how I'd love to just beat them all to death right now. The more I thought about it, the more I felt the urge to do it. Maybe the moment I did something reckless like that, the simulation of the bad end would end, and uh, the world would then reset. I would then return to the original world where I could make different choices. Rimi would be there, Misumi-kun would be talking to me in his normal, overly friendly manner. Everyone would have completely forgotten about my shameful behavior. No one would be making fun of me. Maybe I should try it. The center of my head felt fuzzy. I felt kind of feverish. Was this that fever you got before obtaining some new knowledge or power? Or was it some delusional fever? I didn't have a specific name for if it or for it if it w was. Oh well, not like it mattered. Maybe I should try it. Even if I couldn't return to the original world, people would just think I was crazy. Now they would probably or they probably already thought that. So it really didn't matter. It wasn't like I had anything to lose. A week ago, back when the nurse had told me that Nanami was still alive, I thought that as long as Nanami was alive, nothing else mattered. Even my life didn't matter. I didn't care if I was treated like some freak and sent to the nearest hospital. It'd be nice if I ended up in the same one as ISA. Where had ISA been admitted to, I wondered. Was it that uh, penite penitentiary-like hospital that she used to be in? Even that would be fine. Hell, that would be even be slightly better than being in this school without Remy. The urges within me bubbled like magma. I could no longer control them. I slowly stood up. Uh-oh. <laughs> Did I choose the wrong delusion? I couldn't help but burst out laughing. Everyone in the class stared at me, and their expressions, their expressions stiffened. Don't look. There was no reason to look at a worthless piece of shit like me. Uh, wait, that wasn't Sarah. Suddenly... I heard... A girl's voice. Not only that, but it sounded straight out of an anime. Who, who the hell was talking to me? I looked around the room one more time. Everyone was all frozen in place due to my odd behavior, but they all kept their mouths shut. I couldn't find a single human being who was talking. But that voice, it was such a strange sensation. Like it was coming from directly inside my head. Was it an illusion? Or had I just crafted yet another delusional girl inside my head? <laughs> huh? What was that just now? They were responding to my thoughts. Was someone reading my mind? No, it had to have just been a delusion. When I shouted, my classmates moved further away from me. 
almost like they were trying to run away in fear. The voice didn't answer my question. All the voice did was continue to talk to me in a really strange way. A shudder ran through me. Goosebumps sprang up on my skin. In an extremely cheerful tone, the voice then said, Uh, please no more. I cowered in my seat, cradling my head in my hands. The world hadn't reset. I hadn't returned to the parallel world where Rimi was. Rather, it was like I'd gone completely and utterly crazy. Yeah, you're acting like it too, to be honest. I know what's happening. I remember. There, there's a few things I remember from the anime and... Yeah, that's one of them. It had been a week since Bon had visited the Frisia office, and things were a little bit different than he remembered. The seas of paper that had been piled, or papers that had been piled high atop each other, or each and every desk, were now completely absent. They had likely all come crashing down due to the earthquake, and Momose had ordered it to be cleaned up. Because of this, the place looked quite tidy. Staring at it with a sidelong look, Bond let out a sigh and then sat down on an office chair where he had wheeled out, or that he had wheeled out from beneath a desk. He restlessly fanned his face with his favorite handheld fan. Momose, who had been tapping away at her laptop's keyboard on her desk, took one look at Bond's dismal appearance and scowled. What? His questions are too damn specific here. <laughs> Momose shrugged her shoulders and then took a bite out of the kintsuba pastry Bon had offered her. Sua brought over two paper cups, steam billowed from the green tea that had been poured into them. With a cheerful smile on his face, he handed Momose and Bon each a paper cup. Sua had been taken to the office once before by Bon while they were on another case. Ever since then, Sua came or had come up or had come to look up to Momose, god damn it, as his mentor rather than his more direct superior Bon. Momose also seemed to enjoy Sua's company, and she tended to speak to the young, honest man with far kinder language than she did Bon. それより何の話してたんすかどうやったら不景に受ける宴会芸を覚えられるかってそうだわな。ああ、そりゃ興味深いっす。スワちゃん、こんなダメ刑事なんかといつまでもつるんでちゃダメよ。もっと優秀な上
Sua, who had circled around behind Bond, peered at the graph and cocked his head. ここ yeah, you know what? I'm kind of on board with that from the little bits of uh, hints that we've gotten through the game so far. さあ。でもグラフを見ると、なんだか不自然なのよね。数値が小刻みに変動しすぎてる。10年ぐらい前まで遡って調べてみたんだけど、ここ5年くらいはずっとそんな調子なのよ。前に大田教授だけか その人が言ってた、えっと、なんだっけ。人類とか半年前から増加してるとかなんとか、その辺と関係あるのか。大田教授の調査では、人類とはそんなに細かい変動は起こさないっていうことなのよ。何らかの異常が起こってて、そこに
死にすぎていたのかさっき番ちゃん言ったでしょ亡くなった方の大半は死因が不明ってそんなの尋常じゃないわ I mean no it, it makes sense you know an earthquake of the scale that we had here weren't really the causes of deaths I mean there were a bunch of headaches people were kind of you know struggling mentally physically etc and an earthquake wouldn't do that obviously there was something else going on there was the bright white light something else caused the earthquake I can agree with that theory that that, that does actually sit well with me um now it also kind of fits the the deal with okay we also have technology that kind of fucked up which can kind of align with the whole electromagnetic shit It, it's kind of、uh, it's kind of making sense here. Well, I think so. And the sun is still dark. Oh, yeah. So, 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 the sun is still dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was talked about. Oh, yeah. So, the sun is still dark. おそらくそうよえマジっすか迷惑党とつながりのある企業団体をあるべきかもうやったわよさすがモモちゃん相変わらず仕事早いねえでモモセイ、raised her hands skyward and stretched far and wide, tilting her head slightly to the side, a satisfying pop sound from her bones. So, the last year, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Oh, that sucks. 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 でも行き詰まっちゃったわよほど巧妙に隠されているかスワちゃんの言う通り私の推測が見当外れでしかないのか、はあ、こういう時は別の方向から攻めてみるってのがデカの鉄則だぜ先輩なんか心当たりあるんすかバンス stopped the hand that was fanning himself and then wet his lips with his tongue 週末に G レートが上がって得するやつって誰なんだろうな。Hmm. That is a good question, actually. I don't know. I hadn't heard any more auditory illusions, but I couldn't bear to spend even another second in the classroom, so I booked it to the restroom and it hid there until afternoon classes were over. The reason I hadn't immediately headed back to my base was not only because of my lingering regret, but also because I still hoped that I'd get to see Remy. So after school, once everybody had left, I snuck back into the empty classroom. And there she was, all alone in the room, smiling at me as I walked in, was Remy. Ishi? Toko it did a no? Not at all, no? Ishi ni kairoka, tak. I was hoping you'd say that. This is exactly what I had wished for. But. Not the case. I was the only one in the classroom. Nobody was waiting for me. I made my way to the courtyard. It was here that Remy had told me I'll stay by your side. But now there was no one here. My only companions were the purple flowers in the flower bed, swaying lonesomely in the autumn breeze. I grabbed the vermilion handkerchief out of my bag, the same one that Remy had given me. I sniffed it, hoping to smell her familiar floral scent, but that smell never came. I had likely washed it once before and in the process erased every trace of her. It was just a regular handkerchief now. The memory lingered, but Remy did not. With every part of me crying out to see her, Nante. I simply wandered around the school grounds. Holding her handkerchief to my mouth the entire time. I disgusted myself so much I felt like I was going to vomit. 
Okay. What's next? Oh, looks like we're just wandering around. After leaving the school, I began to walk around aimlessly. I didn't care about anything anymore. My fears about being attacked by Shogun or Yua or whoever else had completely vanished. I even found myself wishing that they would kill me. Jesus, as long as it wasn't painful, I welcomed it. My mental state had been completely overtaken by depression. When my gaze happened upon it, the center of Shibuya was so bleak, it only served to accelerate my depression all the more. Not a single smile could be seen on the people walking down the street, all they did was scowl grimly at their surroundings. It gave the place a particularly stark atmosphere, one where it felt as if a fight could break out between the passers-by at any moment. Stores that would normally be filled to the brim with people had, had their uh, shutters practically bolted to the ground. People, or just by walking aimlessly through Shibuya, I'd already come across a ton of them. I also noticed that there were less cars on the road than usual. The jumbotrons that had always blared through the streets were now completely silent. And in their place were the incessant sounds of police sirens, car horns, and various cars screeching in the distance. There wasn't a single trace of the mess I'd caused in front of the station a week ago. Even if I hadn't disappeared from the people's memories yet, the city's memories may have long since driven me into obscurity. How nice it would be if I, too, could wipe away my memories. To know nothing, to be ignorant, to remain a fool. I was sure a person like that lived a life full of sunshine and roses. <laughs> Eh, you might be right. I had a feeling Senna had said that to me, but was it really so wrong being naive? People, me, none of us are that strong. I was always wishing for someone to save me. I couldn't do anything on my own. I didn't want to. I stood in the middle of the road and closed my eyes. The most agonizing thing about all this was that I barely understood what was actually going on. Hey, me too. I have absolutely no fucking idea what's going on here. Things like Shogun and D-Swords were things I didn't want to know, but I had ended up learning about them regardless. However, if you were to ask me what they were, I wouldn't be able to answer. I didn't know the answer. Maybe I should just die. Looking to the top of the O-Front building, I thought to myself, if I were to die, maybe my memories would reset, and I would get to play again. Hey, person controlling me, what do you think? I don't know. I don't know no more. This current playthrough is a complete and utter failure. You made a mistake by allowing your joke of a character to grow in levels. You should have made me more like a hero. You should have made me actually cool. You should have made me more sociable, respectful to women, and you should have given me a passionate sense of justice that would allow me to empower the weak. As I am now, I can't beat the final boss. I can't beat the game. I can't do anything, so please don't expect me to reset the game. Please, I'm worthless like this. Erase me. I don't think I can do any of those uh, actions. I wasn't erased. Instead, I felt the impact of someone bumping into my shoulder. Hey, I thought it was just an auditory illusion. Earlier this morning I had heard a girl version of that line and now it was a guy version. Who asked for that? I'd rather much hear a much more moe voice, an illusion I can actually fap to later. later Jesus. Uh, then again, if they were to whisper something sexy in my ear, I'd get a boner even though I was in the middle of the city. <laughs> I see nobody. I opened my eyes. There were three men standing all around me. All three of them were wearing baggy clothes and they had gold, silver, and red hair. Two of them had their noses and ears pierced and the remaining one just had their ears pierced. One of them was a Ganguro, which I thought had gone completely extinct before now. Ah, there's a death flag, I thought to myself. So this was the bump into confrontation kind of death flag, huh? It really was just one after the other today. Whatever, I don't even care anymore. Just hurry up and kill me. 
Once you do, the game will reset and I'll be born anew. Do you have a knife on you? Make sure you stab me in a way that I die instantly, all right? I was so scared my legs were shaking. Let's get that! I shouted that instinctively, though it had been closer to a scream. I didn't care how it, <laughs> how it made me look. Yeah, we're already get fucked. Get we're already fucked in how we look. I don't want to die, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. I was lying about not caring anymore. My situation might be hopeless, but I still don't want to die. One of the dokuns covered my mouth. I couldn't speak anymore. They grabbed my arms from both sides. I stopped resisting. They dragged me into a deserted alleyway no one would go anywhere near, grinning the entire time. So I decided to launch a preemptive strike against the three men. I got down on my hands and knees and apologized in a shaky voice. I held out my wallet to them. The dokun snatched it from me. <laughs> Still on my hands and knees, I breathed a sigh of relief when he said that. If he liked me, he was probably going to let me go. No, he wasn't. これ強制。本当はすぐ払ってもらうとこだけどよ。今日の夜までにしてやるよ。で、まあ、なんか超能力使って見せてくれたら半額にしてやってもいいけどな。なんか言えよ。超能力見せろっつってんだよ。できねえ
a number of academic books lined a nearby shelf, neighbored by the muted pink petals of an arrangement of cosmos flowers resting in a vase. The room was neat and tidy. Nothing moved, nothing stirred. It was a space where time seemed to have come to a stop. The window cut into the evening sky, and by that window was a small figure sitting in a wheelchair. The figure's back to the window, he remained still and motionless. His breathing was so light, and the intervals between each breath were so long, one might think he was already dead. His skin was covered with wrinkles. His cheeks were hollow. His eye sockets were sunken in. His scalp was barren. With these features, it was often questioned whether he should be referred to as a young boy or an old man. His shadow, which he had, du or which he had dubbed Shogun, extended all the way to the door of the room. The world then moved for the first time, the door slowly opened, and a figure emerged from the darkened corridor, stepping foot into the room, seeped in evening glow. Or steeped. Oh. Hello. Sakihara Rimi did not fully enter the hospital room, instead choosing to remain at the entrance. Her expression, illuminated by the setting sun, detailed how the girl had been in deep, or had been deep in thought. <laughs> Ayo? Shogun remained motionless in response to her words. Remy's voice was laden with grief and sorrow. Her eyes appeared slightly moist. Remy was unable to confirm whether or not he was actually moving his mouth to speak. Remy hung her head, and then gently ran her fingers through her hair that draped down before her. できる人と、できない人がいる。できる人はきっとロマンチストなんだね。すごく長い。長い夢をよく見るよ。見ている間は何年にも感じられる。私もそうだった。そうだった気がする。でもそれは幻。寝ているうちのほんの二三秒程度のものなんだって夢って心の歌方なのだから早く目覚めて出ないといつかあなたは西城匠に殺されちゃうそれでも構わないよ夢から覚めるわけにはいかないこの夢は <laughs> okay. Uh, add that to the list of what the fuck is happening. Um, yeah, we'll 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 save it there, I guess. I think that's an okay place. Um the fuck was that? I don't even know what the hell I'm supposed to make out of that. So Shogun and Remy are actually in cahoots? Remy is still around, so she hasn't disappeared necessarily. But what did she mean? And I guess she needs to get... She feels like she needs to get rid of Takumi. She has to get rid of us, but... Why? What is the goal? What is everybody's end goal here? There's like so many different things going on. There's these goons or politicians or whoever the fuck that's doing this uh, this wacky shit. And basically, the, the ones that have been causing all the damage. There's the investigators. I don't even know where the hell they're trying to, to look. They're not really looking at Takami. They're just kind of looking into what is really happening. We have whatever the fuck Rimi is doing. We have whatever the fuck Yua is doing. I don't even know where Senna is right now. And, uh, shit, what's her name? Ayase? She's in the hospital somewhere. 
I don't even know what the fuck we're doing. I don't even know where Nanami is. Everything is just all over the fucking place, and I just, I just don't know. Which I guess is the point. I'm just supposed to not know. Oh well. Thank you all for watching this episode. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.